This video is brought to you by AudioQuest, makers of the Dragonfly range of USB DACs. Click to audioquest.com for more information. Let me set the scene for you today. Behind me is a pair of JBL 4349 loudspeakers. Powering them is a Hegel H190 amplifier, but we're not talking about either of those things today, but they are the kind of review system if you like. So under scrutiny today is a 250 euro streaming DAC from Argon Audio called the Solo. So this black plastic box is super simple. On top is the Argon Audio logo. On the front is a status LED light. And on the back is the connectivity. So we get a pair of RCA analog outputs. And they are fed by an internal DAC, which is based around an ESS 9018K2M chip. And that chip supports PCM up to and including 24-bit, 192. That's for people that are into high-res audio. I'm really not, I'm quite happy with CD quality streams. Now, one thing you'll notice that's not on the back panel is an ethernet port. There is no ethernet here. This solo streamer is Wi-Fi only. It only does Wi-Fi. And we onboard it onto our home network using the Google Home app. And that means for streaming inputs, we obviously get Google Chromecast built in, which is very unusual at this price point. We add to that Bluetooth, Apple AirPlay 2, Spotify Connect, and Rune Ready. So how does this Argon Audio Solo sound? Well, I built a little playlist in Rune called Blandly Streaming Tests in order to kind of give this streamer a workout, really. I put some Orb in there, some Bob Dylan, Bjork, Craven Foltz, something else I've forgotten. Oh yeah, and I was also been playing a lot, this new EP by SND and RTN, or Sund and Return. Uh, it's called Chain Reaction. It's pure dub techno. It's bloody amazing. Oh yeah, the artist that I forgot, REM. We'll be coming back to that in a minute. Now, how does the Argon Audio Solo compare to the much more affordable WIM Mini, which is 100 bucks? We're doing side-by-side -side comparisons here, as usual, in order to triangulate the performance of the Argon Audio Solo. So that's why we're comparing it to the WIM Mini first. The WIM Mini does Bluetooth, AirPlay 2, Spotify Connect. It also has the bonus of having Tidal Connect, which the Argon doesn't have. However, when it comes to sound quality comparisons, there's really no contest here. The, the solo romps home easily the, the better of the two. It's more lit up, it's more vivid sounding, and layer separation is much, yeah, much clearer to these ears with this music. Getting more specific, if we listen to something like Visions of Johanna by Bob Dylan, which many people would know, an amazing song, with the Argon streamer, it's much easier to pick out the drum pattern that is being tapped out all the way in the right hand speaker. And it's much easier to discern the bass guitar that seems to play beneath Dylan's voice. But equally with side by side comparisons like this, it's really crucial to level match the, the, two, the two streamers. Because for example, the Argon, I think, is a bit hotter on its output than the Blue Sound node. In that if we connect both to the Hegel amp, the Argon sounds a bit louder. So I used a, um, a dB level meter app on my phone at the listening position and then played some pink noise. So I know this is really obsessive compulsive, but played some pink noise just to kind of get the levels as close as I could possibly get them. And I do this quite a lot, but I don't talk about it because it is, yeah, it's super nerdy and I think it's a little bit off-putting, but I will mention it in this video. So yeah, the Blue Sound node has a much better 
or much broader set of functionality than the Argon Solo. So the Node has two-way Bluetooth, it has an HDMI input, and it has a touch-sensitive top panel. And so if you want the better functionality, then you want the Node. But when it comes to sound quality, it isn't as clear-cut as you might expect from two streamers where one, the Argon, sells for pretty much half the price of the other, the Node. And I guess the spicy finding for this video is that despite that price disparity, I wouldn't classify one streamer as better than the other. For example, I would say that the Argon Solo, its soundstage is a little bit wider than the Node. And the Argon also plays it a little bit crisper with Bob Dylan's voice and also with Peter Buck's guitar riffs. Let's just pause for a moment to talk about REM because now they're really classified as dad rock. And back in the early 90s, around the time of Out of Time, Automatic for the People, they were still sort of alternative rock and before that they were college rock. And I think up until Automatic for the People, their reputation was pretty solid. Like apart from, yeah, the controversies of um, shiny happy people and maybe Radio Song, which if you remove those from Out of Time would make it a much, much better record. Automatic for the People, it's not as good for me as it used to be. And then after that came their sort of return to guitar rock in the form of Monster, which really turned R.E.M. into a stadium rock act. This is a solid album. It's not amazing. It's like a 6 out of 10, really. I think much better was New Adventures in Hi-Fi, which came a couple of years later, was recorded on the road during that Monster tour. Much more solid set of songs here, more adventurous. Got Paddy Smith on one track as well, so you can't go wrong with that. This for me is the last truly, truly great REM album. After that came the start of the decline, really, and I think Reveal, I bought this on CD from a flea market a few months ago and I haven't really played it because it only cost me a buck. But a buck, get it? Peter Buck? Never mind. Um, this is FM radio at REM for people who aren't really REM fans. This is for, I think, basically songs that Postman might whistle. It's just a little bit insipid, and it's just not, it's not great. Oh, hang on a minute, no, that's not true though, because I've missed one out. <laughs> I missed out Up, which is really good. This is after Bill Berry left, after the New Adventures in Hi-Fi. Sorry, this is the, well, no, actually New Adventures in Hi-Fi is, is the last truly great REM record. This is not too bad. This came before um, Reveal, but it's pretty good, but yeah. Reveal, oh no. And then after that, Around the Sun, just dreadful, just absolutely bloody dreadful. I don't even have it here. I won't have it in the house because it's so appalling. And then they kind of save themselves because they came back a few years later with Collapse Into Now, which is a great, again, very sort of guitar assault on your senses kind of record. And then they wound up their career with Accelerate, which is an, again, another sort of guitar record. So they kind of make, made it good or came good in the end. But yeah, right in the middle, Back to our streaming comparison, the Argon Solo actually I think edges out the node on bass punch and avidity. So if we're talking about the really deep low bass notes that introduce us to Bjork's hyper ballad, I think yeah they just come on with a little bit more force through the Argon than they do through the blue sound. And I think the Argon is a bit keener with, this is a horrible cliche here, with the sort of the leading edge of transients on the synth notes that drive us very steadily through the Craven Faults track that I put on my playlist. And I also think the Argon, because of its sort of more lit up feel, it tends to tease more decay out of the dub wash echoes that really dominate that SND and RTN EP. Now that keener presence that the Argon seems to have I think makes it the better choice for low level listening, so low volume listening. However, I can definitely understand how some people might prefer the more standoffish nature and the sort of 
smoother, softer top end of the Blue Sound node. Now at this point, some of you are probably wondering, well, how do these two outboard streamers, John, compare to the streaming DAC inside the Hegel H190? And it's a great question. And I can tell you that the Hegel H190 aces both of them when it comes to soundstage width, avidity, and tone. So you could add either of these two streamers, the Argon or the Blue Sound, to the Hegel to advance its functionality. So if you wanted Chromecast or if you wanted two-way Bluetooth or HDMI, you could definitely add it to the Hegel. But you wouldn't do it for sound quality. Now, how big a difference are we talking about here? Well, nothing here is getting destroyed or crushed. There aren't sort of trails of destruction everywhere. Not at all. The differences between, the, say, the Node and the Solo, yeah, they're not as pronounced as differences between rooms, speakers, and amps. They're kind of subtle. You know, some people really hone in on that subtlety, especially when they've got their speakers and amps already sorted. However, putting more daylight between itself and the two outboard streamers is the Hegel. So, yeah, the difference between the Hegel and the, I guess, the, the Node and the Solo is bigger than between the, the Node and the Solo themselves. Does that make sense? Of the two streaming outboard DACs, the Argon and the, the Blue Sound, some people might, I guess, nominate the Solo as the more resolving of the two. But you wouldn't put the Solo in an already bright-ish system. But if you feel like your hi-fi system could do with a little bit more pep and bounce, then the Argon Audio Solo would be a solid choice. And I think the Argon sounds just about bloody perfect in our 1,000 euro hi-fi system. Its crispness and presence plays very neat counterbalance to the Dali Spector 2's kind of easy breezy, easy going kind of nature. They're not super keen, they don't kind of come at you with a lot of bite, so the Argon Solo adds a little bit more of that into the mix, which I think is a, is a good thing. Alternatively, if you've already got an external DAC that you like, you can use the digital connections on the back of the Solo to connect it to your DAC. You've got a choice of coax, or Toslink, there's no USB here. Alternatively, if you're stuck with something like the Audio Lab 6000A Play, you could use the Solo with a digital connection into its Toslink or coaxial inputs in order to sidestep the, the gapped playback that DTS PlayFi still gives you. Because playback from Rune Ready on the Argon is gapless, Spotify Connect is gapless, AirPlay is gapless, Bluetooth is obviously gapless. The only one that isn't, is Chromecast. The elephant in the room here at the 250 euro streaming DAC price point is the Raspberry Pi. You could build a streaming DAC around a Raspberry Pi for similar money and maybe get a better sound. Maybe theoretically speaking. I say theoretically because Raspberry Pis are quite hard to get at the moment and if you can get them they're quite expensive. And then you have to ask yourself would your Pi based streaming DAC give you analog outputs as well as digital outputs? The chances are, I think, probably not. And when I say digital outputs, I don't mean USB. I mean coax and Toslink. And then there's the fact that no Raspberry Pi operating system that I know of offers Chromecast reception. And then let's not forget that building a Raspberry Pi-based streaming DAC for most people is a major faff. And the Argon Audio Solo is not. It's plug and play, set and forget. You're up and running in literally five minutes. I guess my only quibble is that the power connector is mini USB. So it's like straight from 2005. And I wish that the, the power lead that they supply, because it basically goes to a phone brick recharger thing, I wish that that lead was a little bit longer. But the real zinger here is that the Argon Audio Solo is not yet available, as far as I know, in the USA. It's Europe only. So if you live in the USA and this thing sounds interesting to you, then it's time to phone your buddy who lives in Europe. And no, that's not me. But it's a great find. And it's a great sort of plug and play type DAC that I tend to look for, like if I'm putting together 
a very affordable hi-fi system and I need a streaming DAC just to put on the front of it. In the past, I've gone for Raspberry Pi solutions. Now, I've, I've built them. They're not too much of a hassle for me, but they are for most people. But now I can just pull the Argon Audio Solo off the shelf and I'm up and running with a great sounding streaming DAC, which gives me the option for digital connectivity if I need it, and offers me Chromecast, Room Ready, Spotify, AirPlay, and Bluetooth. I think that's fantastic. So yeah, if you like this video, then please hit the like button down below. If you like my attitude towards high-end audio, in that, yeah, not everything at the affordable level with streaming is based around the Raspberry Pi. This is the, the real kind of killer blow, I think, that Argon Audio are dealing here, is they're not forcing us, you know, when we're going below 500 bucks on our spend on a streaming deck to go with a Raspberry Pi-based solution. Now, I know that the Win Mini exists because we use it as a comparative data point here, but it just can't keep up with what the Argon can offer, audibly speaking or sonically speaking. So, and also, yeah, I mean, the, the WIM gives us Tidal Connect, which the Argon doesn't, but the Argon gives us Chromecast, and it gives us that all-important rune readiness that many sort of high-end audiophiles or people that are really deep into streaming love to use. So if you dig all of that, sorry about the ramble, then please hit the subscribe button down below. Please subscribe to this channel. And as always, thank you ever so much for watching. Behind me is a pair of JBL 4349 loudspeakers. They're highlight. So this black box is really super simple. There's the Argon Audio, and this, so this, we're doing side-by-side -side comparisons. We're doing side-by-side -side comparisons here as usual in order to try, we're doing side-by-side -side comparisons here as usual in order to, Let's just stop for a moment or pause for a moment to talk about REM because now some people might call out the Argon Solo as the more resolving of the two streaming DACs, you know, it and the node. But, and I've forgotten what I'm going to say, the only one, the un, I can't even say it. You could build a streaming back, back when it comes to soundstage width and, oh, I've forgotten it already. Uh, do I want my phone for this?